Why do we need fantasy and imagination in our daily lives? As children, we used to create fantasy stories all the time. As adults, we can still imagine possible dream scenarios for the future. According to Josie Glausus, writing in Scientific American Magazine, For most of us, daydreaming is a virtual world where we can rehearse the future, explore fearful scenarios, or imagine new adventures without risk. It can help us devise creative solutions to problems or prompt us, while immersed in one task, with reminders of other important goals. In a way, daydreams are like computer training simulations where pilots can learn how to fly without taking risks. If we don't take the process too seriously, it may very well be healthy and refreshing for our brain. Imagining our future life through a form of daydreaming may give us a hint of some creative solutions for our problems. Another form of fantasy in life is using our imagination for entertainment and relaxation. When you see a movie full of fantasy, you dive into the story, not creating anything yourself. After two hours, though, you feel refreshed and relaxed. Many of us have that feeling watching Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. Excessive consumption of fantasy-based movies, stories, and games, however, may become intrusive. You just swallow up content produced by others. The more you consume fantasy content, the more addictive this process becomes. Outside content suppresses your inner desire to use your own imagination in any personal projects. The body and mind are not designed to tolerate intense feelings of fear, shame, anxiety, and guilt. So it makes sense that fantasy and imagination can provide temporary breaks during this time of intense negative emotions. Clearly, there's a significant psychological need to fantasize and create stories. It's no wonder that people have created myths, legends, and fantasy stories since ancient times. Throughout history, humankind has imagined and created similar fantasies. The dream of flight is an obvious example. There is special presentation from the Library of Congress called the Dream of Flight. The prominent idea of this presentation is the following. From the beginning of recorded history, almost every culture has had its own version of winged angels, winged horses, dragons, or flying carpets. It's taken us approximately 1900 years of dreaming, at least, before the first airplane was created. The patterns of our fantasies when it comes to flight are very similar between various cultures. As Robert Goddard, the American inventor credited with building the world's first liquid-fueled rocket put it, It is difficult to say what is impossible, for the dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the reality of tomorrow. If we analyze this quote closer, a familiar pattern emerges. Dream yesterday, hope today, reality tomorrow. A significant part of dreaming is fantasy the ability to imagine something that doesn't exist today, but may be possible in the future. If we were to choose one word to describe the Walt Disney Empire, it would be fantasy. In the real world, our freedom is limited for reasons beyond our control. In a fantasy world, however, we can imagine and explore any situation without the risk. Therefore, fantasy and imagination provide us with the opportunity to craft new ideas and creations. If you are imagining mental adventures, you are achieving the mental freedom necessary to create novelty. There's no set direction. You are totally free to explore. You don't even know what the final or correct solution is. When you combine mental adventures with imagination, there are two consequences. 1. You view the whole process in a playful way and you feel relaxed. 2. In this process, you increase the chance for novelty and innovation. Fantasies are necessary and are healthy for the mind if used appropriately. 
Many different legends, myths, and stories based on fantasies created in different parts of the world reflect our thirst to imagine and dream about things that are far away from so-called reality. The pattern is still true today. Fantasies from yesterday have started, at least partly, to become the realities of today. We can conclude this short discussion with a quote from Albert Einstein. When I examine myself and my methods of thought, I come to the conclusion that the gift of fantasy has meant more to me than any talent for abstract, positive thinking.